Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another UU Live. Today we are on the suspect test ladder. If you guys didn't know, Salamence is being suspect tested, so we are going to be able to hit up the ladder without seeing Salamence ever. I'm bringing back an old team uh, from one of my very first UU Lives. I uh, really enjoyed this team. It originally had a Mega Houndoom on it, but... Uh, I was finding that I was very, very ground weak, uh, even with Gyarados. I didn't want Gyarados to be my only ground check, so especially that a lot of ground types get uh, rock type moves. So I decided to swap out uh, Mega Houndoom for a Rotom Mo instead, uh, which is a uh, very nice ground check. Uh, gets grass coverage, so it can pretty much beat uh, Crocodile and Swampert. Uh, common ground threats in the tier as well as uh, Mammoth Swine, which is nice. Obviously, Ice Shard does a lot, but we are a bulkier variant, as I'll show you guys in a second here. Uh, we are rocking. Uh, wait, why is this like this? Uh, I thought I grabbed the bulkier variant. <laughs> is this supposed to be bulky, really? Uh, this is the set for a bulky attacker with 64 HP. Very nice. Very nice showdown. Uh, I'm going to drop a little bit of speed on this thing and give it a lot more bulk, actually. Uh, probably round it out at about, um, let's see, 301, I think, 240. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, give it 16 speed, be able to outspeed uh, base 85s, base 80s uh, that are uninvested, so that's kind of nice. Uh, rocking a lot of special attack, which is cool. Uh, Will-O-Wisp and Pain Split, very nice. Uh, great to have a status move on this team, which we didn't have before. So, I'm going to see how this works. I haven't actually tried it out with Rotom Mo yet. So uh, let's uh, let's hop into a battle and see how we can do. There are actually a lot of people on the suspect test ladder, so uh, I was just uh, actually laddering up to get some points so that I could get better games. Uh, as you guys can see, this is already a very good game. Uh, right off the bat, what I see is if I weaken Empoleon, then Gardevoir just wins. Uh, Gardevoir is a very, very nice Pokemon right now without Mence around, uh, being able to uh, be one of the fastest Scarfers in the tier. Uh, Hydreigon obviously outspeeding it, but... Uh, not a lot takes on Gardevoir, and it's really nice with Conk around now and, and Sylveon. Uh, if you can weaken Sylveon, you can pretty much sweep with uh, with Gardevoir. So I think uh, here our best possible lead is, uh, honestly, I think Rotom. Uh, Rotom's looking really nice uh, right about now, and uh, we'll lead with it. My opponent chooses to lead with Beedrill, so not the best lead for us. Uh, we can switch into Empoleon on a Poison Jab, however, which is what I'm expecting my opponent to go for. Not really U-turn, because... I would be able to get uh, momentum with a Volt Switch after my opponent does not have a ground type, which is really nice. Uh, great to see. And uh, we'll be able to just uh, gain some momentum off of Volt Switches here. Hopefully we can pick up a couple of uh, a couple of wins. Uh, obviously, if you guys saw the OU Live from yesterday, which was kind of uh, incognito because of the thumbnail, uh, we did get three losses with that team we had originally built for the Nebraska Natus. But... Um, Hopefully we can pick up like three wins here. I do want to get some suspect points as well. I've never actually voted for any of the suspect tests, so if I can get enough coil, that would be really cool. Uh, I would personally ban Salamence uh, because I think it's way too good in tier and it sees way too much play as well. It's kind of like the uh, the UU Landorus T. Uh, you can never really take Landorus T out of the tier though, so. Uh, my opponent does just go straight for the Poison Jab. I'm just going to Scald right here because uh, knockoff, uh, he's carrying knockoff anyway, not drill run, so. Uh, it's looking kind of good. We do get the burn on the Beedrill as well, so if he is four attacks with um, uh, with Drill Run, he won't be able to knock us out at this point because he did get rid of our Shooka Berry. So uh, I am just going to throw out an Ice Beam right here. Uh, my opponent's going to go for a U-turn, hopefully into something like Hydreigon. Um, I'm thinking that would be the play. Or if he's Guts Conk Elder, that would also be a very good play. And Polyon's solid as well, so we'll see what my opponent wants to do. The Burn Beedrill is no longer a threat to us. I don't even think it can take out Rotom from full, so my opponent is going to go into Empoleon, so good play on their part. Uh, I think I am going to conserve my own Empoleon because it actually does... Uh, well, maybe not. Uh, I'm just going to Scald here. It's probably my opponent's rocker, so I do want to stay in to get off a, a potential defog. He does put me in torrent range right there. He does get a burn, however, so that's a little unfortunate, but we are just going to fire off another Scald. It's going to do a lot more this time because of the torrent, and we get our own burn in response, so kind of cool. And uh, I am actually just going to throw out another Scald right here as my opponent switches into Sylveon. So a very big hit right here coming off. If we don't see leftovers, we do. Okay, so we pretty much know this thing is defensive. We can switch into our Needle Queen here, uh, threaten this thing out immediately. Uh, his best response to this would probably be switching into Beedrill to sack it. So I'm just going to get up rocks right here. My opponent's going to go for a Protect, which is even better for us. Because uh, now we can throw off a completely free Sludge Wave and knock out the Sylveon right there. So it's going to be a very good turn for us. We do get up rocks as well, which means his Beedrill goes down immediately after the burn. Uh, with the burn, excuse me. And unfortunately, I'm not packing any kind of electric coverage on this Needle Queen, but... 
Uh, Gyarados can't do a lot to Rotom Mo. I mean, it can bounce, but that's pretty much about it. Uh, as my opponent does go for a Waterfall that is resisted, and like I said before, we are free to Volt Switch on my opponent's entire team. He does outspeed us at this point and can go for a sub to block it, but I mean, I have so many threats in the back like Gardevoir and Haxorus that losing health on this thing is not the smartest idea. My opponent is going to just switch into Hydreigon straight off the bat. Very good play. Uh, we're going to see if this thing is any kind of uh, choice locked right here. I think Gardevoir is my best play overall. This thing can pack Iron Tail, and if he's Scarfed, he is faster than me. So I kind of want to pull a double back in a Rotom, just to scout for it. Uh, I think that's our best possible play. Um, on the other hand, Dark Pulse is going to hurt a lot, because we're not as bulky as we should be. But I am just going to switch into Rotom. Let's see what he chooses to lock himself into. He actually chooses to switch, which is awesome, because the Beedrill is going to go down to the burn right here, and he doesn't get the free sack. Uh, we are going to get off some more Stealth Rock damage on this Hydreigon, and this time I'm going to just Volt Switch. Uh, my opponent's going to go for Flash Cannon, predicting the Gardevoir to want to come in. We also see that it's Life Orb, which is great because now we can actually just spam Moon Blast. The Empoleon is sitting at 59%, so it's not going to appreciate it either, especially coming off of max special attack. So uh, this is pretty much going to get a kill at this point. Obviously, we're not going to knock out the Empoleon, but uh, Hydreigon goes down, which is a very big threat to the team. And at this point, it's looking like Gardevoir just wins this game. So I'm going to switch out uh, against this Empoleon. I do not want to take a Flash Cannon at all. My opponent chooses to throw out. Oh, chooses to switch into Conkelder. Very nice. Okay. Uh, we're going to go for the Pain Split right here because I want to get as much damage as possible on this thing. He does go for a Bulk Up, which is interesting. Uh, and I even if this thing is uh, Guts, I just want to burn it. To be honest, I see the leftovers, so I want to get some residual damage on this thing, and our Gyarados can pretty much come in, intimidate, and bounce, and threaten this thing immediately, so uh, I'm not too worried about it. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm just going to throw off this uh, this burn right here. Uh, we are indeed faster than Conkelder, which is cool because of the speed of investment. Even if he's max speed Jolly with bulk up, uh, he cannot outspeed us, so really cool. Uh, I don't think the 16 EVs mattered, actually, uh, if we look at this. If we take it off, I think we still outspeed him. Yeah, we do. Okay. Uh, so, uh, anyway. Uh, good to know that Rotomo outspeeds Conkelder uh, with no speed investment. Very nice. And uh, we'll keep that in mind for later. Might take off those 16 speed EVs, put them somewhere else, maybe in defense. Uh, not sure yet, though. So, uh, it's my first time using this Pokemon in, uh, in UU. So, um, I might be lying about that. I'm not even sure. <laughs> Uh, let's just see. Uh, my opponent's taking quite a while to make his play. But guys, before when I was laddering, I just got like two or three games at a time, and I was just like uh, switching between windows and making like the best optimal play that I could. Uh, my opponent's going to throw out a Drain Punch. This is going to do a lot of damage, as we can see he is Guts. Um, I'm assuming a Mock Punch is coming my way, but there's nothing I can really do about that. Um, at least my opponent won't heal off the damage, which is nice. So now what we can do is go... I think Gyarados is fine, uh, as well Gardevoir is a pretty solid play, just throw off a Moonblast. I actually want to calc to see if uh, Conkelder, that's not Assault Vested, so let's say uh, OU Sheer Force Attacker dies to Gardevoir, or we're already on Gardevoir Choice Scarf. Uh, yeah, Moonblast does take it out uh, if it's not running any bulk. Uh, if it is running, let's say, 252. Uh, here and then it's 414. Yeah, Moonblast still knocks it out. So Gardevoir is definitely our play. Mock Punch is gonna hurt, even though it's quad resisted because our physical defense is garbage, and this thing is at plus one with the uh, guts boost. So that's gonna be a little unfortunate. But uh, again, Gardevoir just uh, I, I just switch out on Empoleon every time, and Gardevoir comes back in. Moonblast the Gyarados to infinity. So uh, it's, uh, it's looking like a win. Uh, I don't see a way I could really lose this. Uh, Moonblast is actually going to fail to take out the Conkelder, and he's going to go for a knockoff, which is going to take us out. But it doesn't really matter because I have a Haxorus in the back. His Empoleon is burned. If it has Ice Beam, it has Ice Beam. And I have my, my own Gyarados as well. So I think my play here is actually just to go into Nidoqueen. Uh, if he goes into Gyarados, then so be it. But uh, Empoleon is actually going to show its face. And uh, we should be able to outspeed this thing and hit it up with an Earth Power right here. And if Gyarados does come in, then I'm going to prevent it from ever uh, setting up on me by going for Ice Beam. Uh, and Ice Beam at the range it's at should be able to take it out. We are Life Orb Sheer Force. And uh, from there, we should be able to just sweep up. So, And if he does manage to get a... Um, a uh, sub or a uh, dragon dance up on me. I can always go into my own Gyarados and just knock him out after. So, 
Uh, Gyarados is going to come in here. We're going to see what my opponent wants to do with this thing. Uh, Ice Beam is going to do a lot of damage to this thing. Let's see if it's able to knock it out from 57. It is not, but we do have our own Gyarados in the back, so we will just be able to fire off another Ice Beam. Go into our Gyarados and uh, go for a bounce, I think. Uh, if he's the subset, though, that could be a little problematic because he'll be able to get up a sub right here. Uh, on our bounce and then just DD again, which is a little, little scary. Um, I'm actually thinking of going into Axorus right here. But uh, no, I'm just going to bounce. That's fine. He's just going to go for Waterfall anyway. So we're uh, going to get flinched actually, which is really uh, not fortunate. Uh, just going to go for another bounce. Uh, if he is Mono Waterfall for some reason, uh, then Haxorus can obviously take the hit and hit him back with a Dragon Claw. But I need a little bit of damage off first, so... Let's see. Uh, the thing is, if he ever clicks bounce, then he's going to come down first, and then we're going to hit him afterwards, which is nice. So he's pretty much forced to just waterfall uh, always, I think. Um, as a matter of fact, I might want to go for a dragon dance right here, just to be able to speed tie him. No, I think bounce is always the play. Definitely. Um, losing Gardevoir kind of sucked. I guess he had a lot of spadef investment in his Conkeldur, because um, with this right here, this spread that we had calced, uh, Moonblast was supposed to take him out, so I guess he was max HP, max special defense, uh, that's what it's looking like, because uh, we weren't able to take him out, so Waterfall is going to connect, we are going to get off the bounce right here, if Waterfall from uh, Neutral Gyarados is doing 26%, then we should be able to knock him out right here, I guess he might have been waiting till I went for bounce, so that he could go for his own, okay, well no, he's just going to Dragon Dance, and we are going to get off this bounce, and knock out his Gyarados, there we go, alright, so... Able to pick up that first win, very nice. Uh, gonna go for another one right here. Rotom Mo is looking pretty good. I liked, uh, I liked what it did right there. Um, not, uh, not the best turn of events on the Conkeldor, obviously, because it was guts. I uh, would have much preferred not burning it in that case. Um, but you know, you gotta, you gotta play with it. Um, gotta try sometimes. I did need that residual damage so that he would go down to uh, the moon blast and the burn after all, so I guess you could uh, you could argue it both ways. So we are gonna try to get another one right here. It is kind of uh, early in the morning. Uh, not early in the morning, but late at night. You know what I mean. Uh, I actually already played this guy a little bit earlier. Uh, I think that was Specs, um, Specs with Earth Power on the Shaman. Uh, also Scarf. Did I play this guy? I'm not sure anymore. Uh, every, every Pokemon in UU is the same. Uh, that's not true, but let's see. Uh, I think my best possible lead is, in fact, um, let's see. I like Rotom Mo as a lead um, because it does cover the. It covers pretty much everything, actually, uh, except for the Arcanine. So I'm going to lead with Rotom Mo as my opponent chooses to lead with Blastoise, which is awesome. He does have a ground type, uh, but I'm just going to Volt Switch because if that ground type comes in, then uh, it doesn't really matter. Gonna get off the Volt Stitch right there, and we are gonna be able to head right into Empoleon, I think, because uh, we are Shuka, and we'll Ice Beam this thing. It is Leftovers, okay, so it's not the set that I thought it was, uh, but I am just gonna Ice Beam right here. Try to do as much damage to this sh Shaman as possible. So he has two potential Stealth Rockers, being Cobalion and um, the Crocodile, neither of which really want to come in right now. Maybe, uh, maybe Cobalion predicting the Ice Beam, but... Uh, he could also think that I'm just going to go for rocks and I'm Shooka. So he might want to bring in his um, his Blastoise as a result to be able to split, to spin after. Uh, a freeze on Blastoise would be cool, but I'm not going to pray for that or anything. Um, Volt Switching was the correct play, I think. And uh, man, my opponents are taking a while to make their moves. I was playing games before and it was going so fast, guys. I went, I went super high, like really, really quickly. I think it was like 45 minutes and if I look at my rank right here. Uh, he's gonna go for the Leech Seed, um, so he's gonna eat up that Ice Beam really well, actually. Uh, thinking he might be fully spit F, um, cause I know to a, an offensive variant it does like 60 to 70. So, let's see, uh, Uber Suspect Test, we are here at the bottom, 13-28, we were 15 wins and 3 losses, so very nice. Um, on this Shaman, it doesn't look like it can actually touch my Rotom, so I might just want to throw off a Will-O-Wisp. Uh, then again, the Arcanine is still right there. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna go to Nidoqueen, uh, as we actually catch the Cobalion, which is really cool. Um, this thing can't really do anything to me, and I'll just be able to get up rocks right here. If my opponent wants to go into, uh, Blastoise, that's fine. He's actually gonna choose to, um, okay, so, he's gonna choose to get up his rocks. 
I fully expect either Blastoise or Shaman to come in here, uh, predicting an Earth Power uh, and trying to negate it. So I'm actually going to throw off a Sludge Wave right here. So my opponent chooses to go into Blastoise. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to get off a huge Sludge Wave right there. And should he want to spin? I don't think he's going to spin. I think he's just going to attack my Needle Queen uh, at this point because I don't have a spinner. I have a Defogger. So he might want to keep rocks up on my side. Uh, if I'm predicting a Scald, then uh, I might want to go into Rotom on this thing. This is definitely his Mega, so it's probably outspeeding Nido Queen. Um, yeah, I think I'm actually just going to go Empoleon. I think it's the best switch overall. Uh, he can have a Worse Sphere, but we'll see if he wants to go for it right away. He does go for Scald. That's actually going to do a tremendous amount. And um, I'm going to predict the Aura Sphere right here, and I'm going to switch into my Gardevoir and uh, take the Mega Launcher for no reason. He's actually going to go for Spin, so good play. I'm going to get rid of the rocks right there. I could throw off a Psychic, but I think Moonblast is just my overall best play. I also want to see what kind of Sylveon he is if he goes into it. Uh, get a crit on the Shaman, which is a little unfortunate for my opponent, but he will be able to live the next one, I believe. Uh, yeah, definitely. It'll only do about 30, so... Um, I'm tempted to switch and just go, actually, into Rotom here. Might be my play. Um... Yeah, just going to throw off another Moonblast. We're not going to be able to knock it out, obviously. He's going to go for the Leech Seed. And I, my opponent's obviously not very happy. But um, I think... Would this thing have Protect? Uh, not sure. I'm going to switch into Haxorus here, actually. Because it puts a lot of pressure on his team. And uh, my opponent chooses to switch into Sylveon. So the worst switch possible right there. Um, I think I just go for damage here. Then again, this thing sweeps, right? Now that his Shaman is low. Let's see. Yeah, I think this sweeps, so I don't really want to lose it right here. Uh, I think my play might be into Empoleon. I resist the stab. Let's see what kind of Sylveon this is. He goes for the Hyper Voice. That does a lot of damage. That is definitely Specs. Uh, we are just going to throw off a Scald right here. Torrent boosted Scald, get off a lot of damage. Hyper Voice does quite a bit as well. And uh, now I can just go into Needle Queen and um, throw off a Sludge Wave again. Uh, or I can go for rocks. Uh, it's really it's really up in the air because I will be able to resist the hyper voice and knock him out the turn after. Yeah, I'm just going to go for rocks right here. And uh, my opponent chooses to switch out into Shaman. That's fine. I can just go for the Sludge Wave right here. Knock out the Shaman. If he goes for Seed Flare, it won't take us out because he's not an offensive variant. We'll be able to knock that thing out. And I do need to keep my Needle Queen simply for the Sylveon. Crocodile does decide to come in. I will go straight into Rotom on this thing. I do not want to mess around with this thing predicting and going for Stone Edge. Uh, he goes for a knockoff, which is a good play. Gets rid of the leftovers. The next knockoff, I don't think we'll be able to knock us out. Uh, it doesn't look like it. It might be a roll, but uh, at this point, I'm just going to Pain Split. On whatever wants to come in um, he might not be choiced uh, the 52% let's actually calc that crook cuz I don't know the calc on I think it's normally supposed to do that amount why can't I spell crocodile crocodile okay choice banded versus rotom uh, rotom cuts um, bulky attacker with about 180 HP let's say uh, knockoff so it's not choice banded it's definitely scarfed uh, he goes into Sylveon. I'm going to get off a Pain Split right there. And I think Leaf Storm should be able to knock this thing out. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. So now we don't need Nino Queen as much, which is awesome. Um, Arcanine comes in pretty much right here and uh, threatens me. Cobalion can do the same thing. It can just fire off a close combat. But it's looking pretty good with, uh, with our Gardevoir right now. Uh, it's looking like Moonblast can potentially sweep if I get a little bit of damage on the Arcanine first. My opponent is going to go into Cobalion, and I do not want to risk a Volt Switch uh, coming off right here, so I am just going to throw off a Will-O-Wisp. He does go for close combat straight off the bat. That's fine. Uh, does lower his defenses. Haxorus, I don't think, can take this. So I am just going to switch into Needle Queen here, honestly. I can take any hit this thing wants to go for and just fire off an Earth Power at this point. Um, if he stays in, he loses his Cobalion, which is pretty much his only Psychic check. And, well, no, he has the Crocodile. Um, does switch into Mega Blastoise and loses that. Okay. Interesting. Um, I need to calc how much uh, a Cobalion does to Nido Queen with an Iron Head. Uh, Nido Queen. Nido Queen. Offensive. Entry Hazard Setter. Iron Head does 31 to 37, so we could potentially live after the next Rocks round. Um, don't know what my opponent's going to want to do here. 
Again, I really don't want to switch into Gyarados right now. We know this thing is Scarfed and not Banded, so we can also Calc to see Crook. Because if he goes for Earthquake, then I just go out into um, into our Gyarados for free. So let's see how, how much Choice Scarf Knockoff does. Uh, it does indeed knock us out. So let's see. Do I want to stay in here? Yeah, I have to stay in at this point. He's going to go for the knockoff. He's going to get the Moxie boost. I can go into Gyarados after. Uh, or I can go... Hmm. No, Gardevoir is not going to do anything here. I have to go Gyra. And I have to... I think I just have to Waterfall, honestly. And try to take this thing out. And lock myself into Psychic with Gardevoir after. Yeah, I think that's my play. He goes for the knockoff. It's going to do a lot of damage. We are going to go for the Waterfall and knock out his Crook. And now it comes down to, can Gardevoir sweep with Psychic? If I get a little bit of damage off on this Cobalion, it can. Uh, but I have to Waterfall right here. I don't have another play. My opponent goes for Iron Head. That could have potentially not knocked us out. So that was a little bit of a risky play. Uh, I think I have to make the play of going into Haxorus here and swapping into Gardevoir. On the close combat and then just firing off a Psychic, I think is my play. I don't think I have enough Pokemon to live anymore, though. Um, to pivot around with, probably should have kept a couple of more. Uh, offensive pivot versus, uh, what is this? Haxorus. Can you knock me out? Double dance. How much does close combat do? Actually, no. Close combat, uh, even from an offensive variant, Jolly does not knock me out. So I can go for the Dragon Dance right here uh, on his close combat, and we will be able to take this. Uh, and relatively well, actually. I'm surprised by that damage. I thought it would take us out for sure. If I get off one hit on this thing, it's game over. It's just a psychic sweep at that point. My opponent goes for Iron Head for the flinch. Doesn't get it. I'm able to get off a Dragon Dance, and we are just going to go for the EQ right here. Uh, if his Arcanine is Intimidated, it is going to have to take an EQ right now. And it's going to not drop, actually. It's also going to be able to E-Speed me, which I'm kind of worried about. Do I die to that? Arcanine, UU Defensive. Uh, it does a lot, but it doesn't kill. So I can just EQ again. And my opponent doesn't even have extreme speed, so now it's going to be uh, Earthquake on the Cobalion into Psychic or Moonblast, and I think, um, well, they're both equivalent in power, I think. So I'm just going to get off as much damage as I can on this thing. We already know it's Leftovers, and then I need to Calc uh, Gardevoir. <laughs> On Cobalion, we're just going to do Calx all game. Cobalion, Offensive Pivot versus Gardevoir, Scarfed, uh, OU, Wall Breaker, let's say. Uh, it's not, it is Timid um, with uh, 252 here. And uh, Psychic, I need to see Psychic. Psychic. Should have probably imported in my sets. Psychic. Something happened in the battle. I don't know what it is, though. Uh, Psychic does 57 to 68, so it should be in range now. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. There we go. And uh, we're just going to fire off a, a Psychic right here. And that's going to be GG. Awesome. So, as you guys can see, my opponent was obviously really not uh, happy this whole game. Uh, I guess because we got a crit on his Shaman with Carnivore. So, one crit and it's, uh, I guess it's game over, but... Uh, I was knocking out the Shaman later anyway with our Nido Queen, uh, regardless of the amount of health that it was at. I think it kills from like 88, so um, that didn't really matter. Um, besides, he lived the next one anyway, and he was able to get off a of Leech Seed, so I would have switched if I didn't crit. I would have probably gone into Rotomo, so anyway, uh, you can say hindsight is 20-20. Anything could have happened at that point, but um, hey, shoutouts again to, to Dom's Game Room for this awesome background, man. Crazy. I love it. It's so nice. I had to, like, crop it specifically to fit um, so you could see all of it while I was recording, but it's just such a nice background, man. Thanks again, man. So, uh, we're at 24 minutes. We only got two battles, so we're going to try to make this one as, quickly as, as quick as possible, excuse me. And uh, we got one. Awesome. Okay, so uh, it's looking like... Rotom Mo actually has a field day on my opponent's team. Uh, minus the Florges. Everything else is just like destroyed. Uh, maybe even Rotom Heat, but everything else is, uh, is getting obliterated uh, by Will O Wisps and, um, and Leaf Storms. So I have to keep this thing alive. I fully expect my opponent to lead with either Rotom Heat or the Fortress. Now I know Needle Queen 2 hit KO's Fortress, so I think I might just lead with it. And uh, if my opponent leads Rotom Heat, that's awesome. 
Does the specs variant take me out? Rotom Heat, Rotom Heat, 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 Heat. Uh, Choice Specs versus Needle Queen. Needle Queen. Overheat does 85 to 101, so it actually has a chance to, yeah. Wow. That's pretty big damage. Um, might want to switch into Gyarados here to, to see the damage. Let's see how much it does to Gyarados, so we can evaluate immediately when we switch in. Uh, overheat does 41 to 49, so let's see. Let's go to Gera. What I'm expecting to be an Overheat or a Will-O-Wisp. Uh, my opponent does choose to just go for the Will-O-Wisp, though, uh, telegraphing that he is not uh, a um, a choice variant. So I might just throw off a Waterfall here for damage and let Gyarados go down, because it doesn't do much this game realistically with the Swampert around that can roar us and the... Uh, and the Toxic Croak. So I'm just going to throw off a Waterfall, get a, as much damage as I can on this thing as my opponent chooses to Volt Switch. That is going to knock us out. I'm actually kind of glad that we don't have that anymore because it's pretty much just Toxic Croak comes in and, and soaks up a Waterfall or Fortress or Floor just like Swampert can roar us out. It's uh, He's obviously more than likely uh, Mega Swampert, but I just prefer to let that thing go down. Um, now Rotom can come in. However, if this thing is max speed with Ice Punch, I'm not going to appreciate that hit. Um, but I can just, I can just, uh, Will-O-Wisp. That's an option. Uh, actually, I think Empoleon is the best play, because we do have the Shookaberry and the Grass Knot, so we'll be able to knock this thing out right here. I don't know if my opponent expects that. Um, I guess we're faster. Okay, goodbye. Uh, I don't know how we were faster. We have, like, no speed investment. That had to be a very, very low speed on that thing. Uh, this thing comes in. It's scary. It's super scary. <laughs> Um, however, Nido Queen resists resist both stabs, so I'll just go into Nido here on the Swords Dance, and we will be able to throw off an Earth Power right here. Uh, the Gunk Shot is going to be resisted, and this Earth Power is going to be able to knock out a Life Orb Toxic Croak right here. And uh, now we're sitting, uh, now we're sitting well here. Uh, I did lose a very good check to Crawdont, but I still have the Rotom Mo in the back, so if it's not max speed Crawdont. Uh, it's not doing too much. The Rotom Heat decides to come in. We already evaluated this. This thing is uh, more than likely defensive. So I might just want to get up rocks here. UU defensive with Overheat does um, 21. Oh, that's not the right Pokemon. Nido Queen. I was going to say, why is Volt Switch hitting me? Uh, Overheat is going to do 45 to 54. So it never knocks us out. Uh, so we can do one of two things. We can get up rocks and potentially break the Sturdy on Fortress, which is actually a very nice play. Um, yeah, I think I might just do that and just, uh, go for the rocks here. My opponent goes for overheat. That's not going to knock us out thanks to the drop. Uh, thanks to the fact that it's defensive actually. And if my opponent chooses to go for a will-o-wisp right here, which is actually the correct play, I think. I'm going to go for a sludge wave. My opponent goes for another overheat. Okay, that's fine. And, uh, Haxorus doesn't sweep yet, unfortunately. We are going to just hit up Gardevoir, I think, and just fire off a, well, no. He's got a very good defensive core left. That's the problem right here that I'm faced with. Um, Volt Switch is going to do absolutely nothing to us because this thing has super lowered uh, special defenses. Uh, we're just going to throw off a Scald and hope to burn the floor just. I think that's the only way we're getting out of this. As you can see, that does absolutely nothing to us. I uh, kind of wish I was leftovers right about now, but Elizabeth is going to come out. The floor just uh, it's going to do 21%. Not bad, but not exactly the damage I was looking for. I also don't have my Needle Queen anymore, which uh, probably wasn't the best choice on my part. I am just going to throw off another Scald here. Try to get a burn. Uh, just going to keep going for it, honestly. I'm going to keep the uh, the Rotom from coming in. He actually gets a special attack drop, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, we are going to finally get the burn, though, so that's nice. We're going to be able to get some residual on this thing. I'm going to go into Rotom because I can basically stall this thing out with Pain Splits. Uh, he does go for a Wish, and I'm just going to throw off a Volt Switch here. Uh, my opponent actually decides to switch into the Rotom. Okay, so we're going to get a Volt Switch. And I can just go into Haxorus, I think, and knock this thing out. Does it knock it out from 37? Uh, Rotom Heat Defensive versus Haxorus Uninvested. Well, invested, but uh, non-boosted. Dragon Claw does knock it out, so I'm just going to go into Haxorus. And uh, I forgot about the Wish completely. Wow. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was a huge blunder on my part. Ooh, okay. That's going to make this a whole lot harder. Um... So Dragon Claw does that much, huh? So I would need two max rolls to take this out. Not even because he has leftovers. Yeah, I have to go into my own Rotom here. Um, 
It seems like a weird play because he's a fire type, but I have to basically bait out the uh, the overheat right here. And I'm just going to Volt Switch. Get the Volt Switch off on this thing. Gonna go into... I still need Empoleon alive. I'm gonna go into Haxorus here as my opponent goes for a... Probably an overheat. There it is. Okay, cool. Get that right. And um, I'm actually gonna SD here and hope he misses a Willow. As he does not, he gets it. We are Lum though, we are gonna be able to cure that off. But I'm gonna go for a Dragon Claw right here. My opponent actually chooses to switch directly into Fortress on this Dragon Claw. And uh, that's gonna do a lot with a crit. And my opponent might have just lost himself the game, actually, I'm looking at this. I'm gonna go for EQ because it's not resisted. That does 39%, goes for a Gyro Ball. It's gonna do a lot, but not enough. Uh, I think Aqua Jet still takes this out even though it's resisted. Uh, I wanna calc that. From the Crawdaunt, let's say it's Life Orb or Swords Dance, whatever. Uh, Aqua Jet does 19 to 23 actually. So we have a chance to live. However, Zorotom's at 99. And he just lost his Steel type. So let's swap in a Rotom on the Aqua Jet. And then we get a free Volt Switch, pretty much. My opponent has to go into his own Rotom Heat, and we'll be able to Volt Switch on this thing, and I think go into Empoleon right here is the play. Because Overheat won't be able to take us out. We'll be able to knock him out with a Scald if he actually hits us with an Overheat. And if he goes into Florges, then we're getting a little more residual on that, which is nice as well. Uh, just to go for Volt Switch, that's not going to knock us out either. And he actually puts me in Torrent, which means the Florges is going to be taking a lot more damage here from the Scald. As you guys can see, that does 32%, which means uh, it basically goes down to the next one. And I'm playing... Please don't get a special attack drop. Thank you. Goodbye, Florges. Okay. And now the uh, Rotom comes in extremely low. It's in range of a Dragon Claw. Uh, and that's what I was playing for, was for the uh, Rotom to go down to a Dragon Claw. Uh, my opponent is going to bring it back in. I'm just going to Scald on the Overheat. And, um, I mean, he's in range of a Dragon Claw, but he's not necessarily knocked out by it. But it does put him in range of uh, the Moonblast from Gardevoir. So that's what I'm going to play off of. I'm just going to go for the, the Dragon Claw here. And if he brings in Crawdons, I'm just going to Dragon Claw again and uh, basically just knock this thing out. So that's uh, going to be GG. My opponent's probably just going to Aqua Jet or Forfeit, that works too. <laughs> and we're able to finish this off in uh, 33 minutes, not the best of timely manners, but uh, we are a little bit higher in the ladder at this point, we're at 1362. Uh, at this point we have, we got three wins, so it makes up for yesterday, that's nice. Uh, if I just type in dots here in the chat, you guys will see my, uh, my rating come up here, hopefully I didn't type too many, but... Uh, we are 17-3, which is very nice. We have 15-26 Coil. I don't know how much you need to actually vote. I'm going to have to play a little bit more UU if I actually want to do that, but I'm very, very busy. I have two matches to prep for this week, guys, uh, and one of them is extremely hard. Ments, why you do this to me, man? Why you why you got to why you gotta have like the worst team for me to prep for ever? Uh, but yeah, so uh, Ments and Colton, and uh, so I'm really, really pressed for time. Uh, again, I have a full-time job, guys. I don't know how I'm balancing all of this, but uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, uh, leave a like down below. Let me know what you thought of the team. If you think it needs any improvements, leave a comment down below. Hit me up on Twitter or on Facebook. Both are in the description, uh, as always. And uh, subscribe if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this live, if you want to see more like this, I put out about four to five showdown lives every week, some with friends, some not. And I uh, have league matches as well if you guys enjoy that. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you guys later. Ciao.